roots of Orthodox spirituality. A wondrous journey into Orthodoxy. Prepared and presented by Angeliki Antonaku Lekea. Hello, dear listeners. We are continuing to read from the book Spiritual Awakening, the second volume in the series Spiritual Councils by Saint Paisios. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. The 666 seal. Yaroda, how soon will these events take place? They are delayed because of you and because of me, so we may be able to acquire a good spiritual state. God is being patient, because if they were to occur now, you and I would be lost. Nowhere in the teaching of Christ is there a specific reference to time. However, sacred scripture does say that the signs of the times will warn us of their coming. We must always be ready and shall see them when the time nears. Then we will be more certain. Time and experience will reveal the events to those who are vigilant. A book came to my attention, which had on its cover three large sixes. This was done to present the six nicely, and to familiarize people with it. In time, little by little, the seal will come as well. Yeroda, even the fasteners sewn on clothes are sold in packages that bear the number 666. The devil is at work everywhere. That number has been on credit cards for some time. Now it is on the fasteners. Many use the 666 as a trademark to sell more of their products. One supports the other. In other words, one 666 company will prefer another 666 company. It has been written that when the depiction of a snake biting its tail is published, this will mean that the Jews have taken control of the world. For now, they have put it on a few currency bills. The number 666 has already been a hit in China, in India. Yaroda, how do people know about using this number? St. John the Evangelist knew what the devil was planning to do just as the prophets foretold that Christ would be betrayed for thirty pieces of silver, that he would be given vinegar to drink, that his garments would be divided. Two thousand years ago, he wrote in the book of Revelation that people would be marked with the number 666. He that hath understanding, let him count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is six hundred and sixty and six. Revelations 13, verse 18. For the Jews, the number 666 is a symbol of economy. As mentioned in the Old Testament, the Israelites imposed a specific tax upon the people they conquered through various wars. The annual amount of the tax was 666 talents of gold. Now, to subdue the whole world, they are again imposing this taxation number, which is connected with their glorious past. That's why they don't want to replace it with another number. In other words, the number 666 is the symbol of mammon. They borrowed it from the weights of gold, not knowing what St. John says about it in the book of Revelation. But nevertheless, it still refers to mammon. The gospel says it clearly, either Christ or mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew 6, verse 24. Events are progressing accordingly. In America, marked dogs transmit a signal and can be located in no time at all, wherever they might be, so they know where each dog is at. Dogs that do not have an identifying mark and are found without an owner are killed by laser. 
Later, they'll start killing people too. Tons of fish have been marked and are being observed through satellites to study their migration patterns. And now a vaccine has been developed to combat a new disease, which will be obligatory, and those taking it will be marked. Many people there are already marked with some sort of laser beam on the forehead, on the arm. Later on, anyone who is not marked with the number 666 will not be able to either buy or sell, to get a loan, to get a job, and so forth. My thinking tells me that this is the system through which the Antichrist has chosen to take over the whole world. And the people who are not part of the system won't be able to find work and so on, whether black or white or red. In other words, everyone he will take over through an economic system that controls the global economy. And only those who have accepted the seal, the mark of the number 666, will be able to participate in business dealings. What will become of the people who are sealed? An expert was telling me that laser beams are harmful to people. People who are marked will attract the rays of the sun and suffer such harm that they will gnaw their tongues in pain. Those who are not sealed will have a better fate than the others because Christ will help those who are not sealed. And this is no small matter. Yeroda, when will Christ help them? Later? No, right then. Yeroda, if they are not able to buy and sell, how will they be better off? You see, God has a way, and I know something about it. Well, this matter has preoccupied me a great deal, and then he sent me the telegram. Oh, how God provides for us indeed. Yeroda, why is the seal also called an inscription or engraving? Because the seal will not be superficial. What does engraving mean? Does it not mean deeply incised straight lines? The seal will be a slash placed first on all the products and then in time with laser beams it will be enforced on people too, on their hand or their forehead. Two years ago I spoke with a doctor from Toronto about this sealing and now he tells me that according to a newspaper article he read, instead of an ID card they will require some sort of impression on the hand. The elder is referring to the technology of palm scanning. Things are progressing, but we cannot exactly say that this or that will be done. Again, certain television sets, which have recently been imported into Greece, have a component which can observe those watching the television. Soon those who have a television will be watching their television, and at the same time they themselves will be watched. That is, those watching will be watched their whole life, what they say, what they do, everything, will be monitored through computers. Do you see what a dictatorship the devil has devised? In Brussels, there is an entire building with a 666 where they house the computer. That computer can monitor billions of people. The entire population of the world is approximately 6 billion. Confession for everyone at the push of a button. Some Europeans have resisted these developments because they fear a global dictatorship. We, the Orthodox Christians, resist these developments because we do not want the Antichrist, nor the dictatorship, of course. Serious events are awaiting us, but they will not stand for long, just as Orthodox Christianity was not wiped out by communism and other enemies in the past, so it will not be wiped out now. The New ID Cards Yeroda, someone said, we use the 5,000 drachma currency note, which bears the number 666, don't we? It's just going to be the same with the new identification cards. The 5,000 drachma note is currency, and the English gold sovereign bears the image of Queen Victoria. This doesn't bother me. Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Matthew 22 verse 21, Mark 12 verse 17. But this is about my identification card. It is something personal. It is not a mere currency note. Identification means what the word says. A person is identified personally by what that card states. The card contains the devil, and I sign that I accept it. How can I do that? Yeronda, what is the relationship between the ID card and the seal? The ID card is not the seal. It is the introduction to the seal. Yeroda, people are asking what to do about the new ID cards. When people ask you, it is better to advise them to consult with their spiritual fathers and to be patient until we see how the church responds to this matter. Many are asking questions, 
a few understand the answers. Since I have written about this clearly in the pamphlet, The Signs of the Times, let each act according to his conscience. A few people have said, of course, well, that is the opinion of one monk. It is not the church's position. But I did not express my own opinion. I simply stated the words of Christ of the gospel, because our opinion must be subject to the will of God as recorded in the gospel. Others who say the opposite of what I said claim that Father Paisios said it. Still others who hear such things, seeing that they are such very serious matters, do not bother to ask if that is what I really said, but just believe whatever they hear. I am not afraid to speak the truth openly. Some people come to my Galibi and throw sixes in the box. That is nothing, after all. But once they threw a sign outside my door, I thought someone had come and not found me and had written a sign. He's out, so others would see it. Then I looked and saw the most abusive words, which I had not heard even as a layman. This whole present situation will be swept away, but first we will go through stormy times. People are roused, and we too must rise up with much prayer. Some people are concerned over the matter of the ID cards, while others are exploiting the issue in order to create problems. The church must take a correct position. She must speak out and explain to the faithful so that they will understand that if they accept the new ID, it will amount to a spiritual fall. The church must also ask the state to at least not make the new ID cards obligatory. If the church takes a serious position and the state respects the freedom of choice of the faithful, then whoever wants can have a new ID card, and those who want to keep the old one can do so. In this case, the strong-willed who keep the old card will have to endure the abuse of the many who will oppose them. Most people will just go about their business. Those who wish to be served will have the new cards, and the other poor people, the devout, will have the old identification card and will have to endure hardships. Now that the minister has promised not to place the 666 on the new ID cards, visibly or invisibly, that too is something. We will be patient and things will clear up in time. It is something even to say that they will not put the 666 on the cards. They themselves deny it, but we'll see what they do in the end. By the time the new ID cards come out, it is entirely possible that we may have the wrath of God upon us. After all, it is not likely that everyone will have a new ID card within 24 hours. Let's wait to see the first ones that come out. They will be examined, and if the minister reneges on his word, then the struggle will be a righteous one. If we continue the demonstrations now, they will claim, Look, they are shouting and creating trouble without reason. A dog, if it is a good guard dog, will bark when the thief comes. When the thief leaves, the dog stops barking. If it continues to bark, then it is not a good guard dog. Yet on that, it was also said by the authorities that since we have religious tolerance in our country, the religion of each person should not be written on the new ID cards. Yes, this does not interest them, but it certainly interests me because this is what identifies me. The card must state where I am from and what I am. If religion is not included in the card, there will be problems. For example, someone will go to the town hall for a marriage license. If his ID card says Orthodox, regardless of how good a Christian he really is, then it will be all right. But if it does not state the religion, how can they give out a marriage license? For the church, this will become a complicated issue. Now, if religion is stated on an optional basis, this would also be a sort of confession. Europe is Europe. Here, things are different. The insidious way of introducing the seal. Little by little, after the credit card and the ID card, that is, after the personal record of each person, they will proceed insidiously to the seal. Through various cunning means, they will compel people to accept the seal on the forehead or on the arm. They will force the issue and say, you can only use the card. Currency will be abolished. People will give their card to the stores to buy what they need, and the merchant will get his money from the bank. Whoever does not have a card will not be able to buy or sell. On the other hand, they will begin promoting the other more perfect system by marking every person with the 666, using laser beams on the forehead 
or the arm, which will not be visible on the outside. At the same time, they will show on television that so-and-so stole the card of so-and-so and took all his money from the bank. And then they will add, the most secure system is to have the seal on the forehead or arm with a laser beam, because only the bearer of this seal will know his or her own personal number. Sealing is the most secure system. No one can take our head or our arm, nor will anybody be able to see the seal embedded in us. That's why they let thieves and other criminals to rampage. Fifteen monastic cells were robbed near Karyas. One person was killed while being robbed. So people will find an opportunity to violate laws and traditions and take whatever they want. Let us say, for example, that someone wants to encroach on somebody's field and claims that it once belonged to his grandfather who had rented it to some shepherds as a pasture for their sheep. And you cannot verify this. Then the authorities will say, unfortunately as it is, we cannot check the facts. We can only do this with the computer. And then they will proceed with the sealing. The computer will then do the search to find out whether or not someone is or is not marked and sealed so they can be helped with their problem or not. The three and a half years will be difficult, during which the few who do not agree with this system will endure hardships. Some excuse will be discovered to throw these people in jail. After a year, they will be taken to another city for questioning and more legal proceedings going from one city to another. Finally, the authorities will say, We're sorry, you are innocent after all. If only you had been sealed, we would have been able to gather the necessary information in a minute. Now we cannot check the facts. Yeroda, will they be able to impose the seal on everybody by force? They are too refined to do that. They will be courteous about it. After all, they are Europeans. They will display some superiority. They won't torture people, but anyone who is not sealed will simply not be able to live normally in society. They will then again say, your troubles come from not being sealed. If you accept the seal, you will not have these difficulties. If anyone happens to have gold, sovereign, or dollars, he will not be able to use them. So if you can now learn to live simply and frugally, you will be able to get through those difficult years. It will be helpful to have a small field to cultivate some wheat or potatoes, to have a few olive trees, and then, with some farm animals, a goat, a few chickens, you will be able to provide for the needs of your family. For even if you were to stockpile various groceries, this would not do because such foods do not keep. They spoil quickly. Naturally, these difficult times will be short. Three to three and a half years. The time will be shortened for the sake of the elect. They will not realize how quickly the time will pass. God will not leave man without help. Yeroda, will Christ intervene during these difficult years? Yes, the saints, Panagia, Christ will appear to save even one wronged man with a good disposition, because he deserves divine help, and even more so, when the whole world will be going through such a difficult time. Now it will be a passing storm, a short occupation by the Antichrist, Satan. He will then be given such a slap by Christ, all the nations will be shaken up, and then peace will prevail in the world for a long time. During this time, Christ will provide the opportunity for His creation to be saved. Is Christ going to abandon His creation? No. He will appear when mankind has reached an impasse and will save it from the clutches of the Antichrist. People will return to Christ, and a spiritual serenity will prevail over all the earth for many years. Some people associate the second coming of Christ with this intervention of His. My thinking tells me that this will not be the second coming of Christ when He comes as judge, but only an intervention of Christ, for there are so many events that have not taken place. Christ will intervene, slap down this whole system, prevail over all evil, and transform it into good in the end. The roads will be filled with many shrines of devotion. The buses will have icons on their billboards. All the people will believe and will want you to tell them about Jesus Christ. Thus the gospel will be proclaimed throughout the whole world. And then Christ will come as judge to judge the world. Judgment is one thing, and the intervention to help his creation is another. Sealing equals denial. 
While the evangelist John clearly refers to the ingrained seal in the book of Revelation, some people just do not understand. What can you tell them? Unfortunately, one hears so many foolish ideas of the brain from certain Gnostics of the day. One says, I will accept the ID card with the number 666 and will place a cross on it. Another says, I will accept the seal on the forehead and will put a cross on my forehead as well. And so many other similar foolish notions. They think that such things sanctify when in fact they are spiritual errors. A bishop told me, next to the spot where I will sign my name, I will also put the sign of the cross. I am not denying Christ, I am only trying to serve my needs. I told him, you being a bishop, it's all right for you to sign your name with a cross, and he, being an archimandrite priest, can also sign his name with a cross. But what will the poor people do? What is unclean cannot be sanctified. Clean water is receptive of grace and is sanctified. Urine cannot become holy water. A stone may be turned into bread through a miracle, but an unclean thing is not receptive of sanctification. As such, the devil, Antichrist, when he is on our ID card, or on our forehead, or our arm with his symbol, cannot be sanctified by placing a cross there. We have the power of the precious cross, the holy symbol, the divine grace of Christ, and only when we preserve the grace of our holy baptism through which we deny Satan, are we united to Christ and receive the Holy Seal, the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you see how they are trying to proceed with rational thinking? Put a cross next to their name, and everything will be all right. And while we see that the Apostle Peter externally denied Christ, and this too was a denial, these rationalists deny the Holy Seal of Christ, which was given to them in holy baptism by accepting the seal of the Antichrist and even claiming that they still have Christ in them. Yaroda, what happens if someone accepts the seal out of ignorance? It will be out of indifference, not ignorance. How can there be ignorance when things are so clear? And even if someone does not know, he must be interested to find out and to learn. If we claim that we did not know and for this reason accepted the seal, then Christ will tell us sternly, O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? Matthew 16 verse 3 When even out of ignorance someone receives the sign, he loses the divine grace and receives the influence of demonic energy. You see, when the child is immersed in the baptismal water by the priest during holy baptism, he receives the Holy Spirit without knowing it and divine grace dwells in him from then on. Interpreting the Prophecies Yeroda, some people say, whatever is written by God, that is what will happen. Why then should we be concerned? Yes, they say that, my child, but it is not how it is. I too hear some people saying, the Jews are not such fools as to be betrayed by the 666, when the evangelist John writes about it in the book of Revelation. If they were, they would have done it in a smarter, more secretive manner. But can we say that the scribes and Pharisees did not know the Old Testament? Didn't Annas and Caiaphas know better than anyone that in the Old Testament it was written that the Messiah would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver? Why didn't they ask for 31 or 29 and instead ask for 30? But they were blind. God knew that things would happen in this way. God foreknows but does not predestine. Only the Turks believe in what is written in Kismet. God knows that something will happen in a particular way, but man still does it out of his foolishness. It is not a matter of God having made a specific decision, but he sees the evil deeds of men and where it will lead them, and knows that their minds will not change. Again, it is not a matter of God arranging things to happen in a particular manner. Other people are preoccupied with prophecies and devise their own interpretation. They do not say, at least, this is my opinion about this matter, but they state unequivocally. This is how it is, and they go on to relate many theories of their own. Some will interpret the prophecies to their liking in order to justify their passions. An example of this is the statement made by St. Cyril. It would be better if the signs of the Antichrist did not take place in our times. Someone who wants to justify himself, his cowardice, will say, 
Ah, you see, St. Cyril was afraid he might deny Christ if he had to face the dangers of the Antichrist. Am I any better than St. Cyril? Therefore, even if I should deny Christ under such conditions, it is of no consequence. Of course, St. Cyril said that the events should not happen so that his eyes would not see the Antichrist, and not that he was afraid of him. Do you see what the devil can do? Again, certain Gnostics, unfortunately, wrap up their spiritual children with swaddling bands as if they were infants, presumably to protect them from worrying. This does not matter, that is not important, as long as you believe inside. Or they may advise them, do not talk about this subject, about the ID cards, the seal, so as not to upset people. On the contrary, if they tell them, let's try to live more spiritually, let's be close to Christ, don't be afraid of anything, and in the final reckoning will go as true witnesses and martyrs, then at least they will be better prepared. When we know the truth, we are given the opportunity to be troubled, to ask questions. We are pained by the present condition. We pray more fervently, and we are careful not to fall into a spiritual trap. But now what? Besides giving their own interpretations, some are also fearful, like worldly people, when these spiritual teachers should be troubled spiritually over the situation and should be helping the Christians by instilling in them a positive concern and by strengthening their faith to find divine consolation. I ask myself, are they not troubled by all these events which are taking place in our society and in our time? Why don't they put even one question mark against the interpretations of their mind? And if they themselves render indirect assistance to the Antichrist regarding the seal, how can they mislead other souls toward perdition? When sacred scripture says, to lead astray if possible the elect, Mark 13 verse 22, it means that the people who try to interpret these matters with their own mind can readily go astray into error. Therefore, behind the perfect system of the service card, the security computer, the sinister global dictatorship is lurking, the Antichrist's slavery, and he causeth all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free and the bond, that there be given them a mark on their right hand, or upon their forehead and that no man should be able to buy or to sell, save he that hath the mark, even the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, he that hath understanding. Let him count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred and sixty and six. Revelations 13, verses 16 through 18. Dear listeners, our show has come to an end. Thank you for listening. We will continue once again where we left off in our next show. Until then, be well. Readings of Orthodox Spirituality Wondrous journey into orthodoxy. Prepared and presented by Angeliki Antonaku Lekea.